All right, it is time for a tag video. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I am here today to do the book reviewer tag. I saw this over at Dane Reed's channel, and the original was created by Gemma of Read a Book Gem, and it was created in September 2020. I will leave links to both of their videos down below, as well as all of the questions, and this is all about book reviewing, as the title of the tag would suggest. Um, and this tag, it was really interesting to come up with the answers, and also think about whether or not I consider myself a book reviewer too. Hmm, interesting. Question number one, where do you post your book reviews outside of booktube? Goodreads, social media, retailers, blogs, etc. Um, for me, I mostly post, there's two different kinds, I realized there's actually two different kinds of book reviews that I do. On YouTube, I do a book review if I'm reading the book for a particular project or exploration. So if I'm reading it for my sci-fi fantasy and weird exploration or uh, my those books exploration or often Canadian books I can like to review as well. Um, and if I create a new challenge or something like one year I did a book to film challenge in 2015 and I reviewed all of the books that I did for that challenge so usually here the reviews are all associated with the challenge or exploration and then on Goodreads I tend to review I'm not sure what the parameter is because I don't review anything I just read way too much to to review something so sometimes I'll like if I re if I'm reviewing something in a series I'll review like everything in the series um, because there's a bit of a comparison one to the other if I liked it better or worse or whatever those kinds of things if there's something in particular I have to say or if I think there's something in particular people would need to know I am more likely to review it but a lot of stuff I, I don't review um, because there's just the volume is just too much um number two what is your start but I don't post them anywhere else that being said I will share on Instagram and Twitter if I do a review on YouTube um and Goodreads automatically posts your Goodreads review to Twitter like once you can change the settings I have it so that it'll do a maximum of one per half hour. So if I'm spending a lot of time on Goodreads, you'll only get the first thing I put a review for. So technically that's kind of cross-posted, but I don't put anything on, on uh, Amazon or my blog, which I haven't attended to for a long time. So just Goodreads and YouTube are the places to be mostly. Number two, what is your star rating system? Okay, so I have two different rating systems. I have my own spreadsheet where I rate things out of 10, but because only I can see that, I'll speak more to Goodreads, um, which I have, uh, which is out of five with no half stars. I do indicate a half star if I think a half star is warranted in the review, and I sometimes might just do like add a review just so I can. So this is the three and a half. Um, so let's look at five out of things out of five. For me, I think most things start at and end at three. Um, for three, I think it's a book that is fine. It's a book that is enjoyable. It's a book that is good. Um, but th but there wasn't something maybe. There wasn't anything to bring it up to a four, and there was nothing that bothered me enough to bring it down to a two. So most books are three. I like them. I enjoyed them. You know, they were they were they were good, uh, um, and that's where a lot of my ratings are are threes. <laughs> um, and then a number four is that if it went. If I, is if I really liked it, like if I really liked it, if I learned something from it, if it was nonfiction, um, but just something that was just, mm, you know, just like I really liked it. Um, and so a book that I thought was great, um, better than average, I guess. I don't know if three I would say is average. I don't like average. Let's skip that. No average. Um, but yeah, so four is that it was really good, that I really enjoyed it, you know, had some really strong elements. Um, and if I consider something a 4.5, but not a five, I leave it that is f4 and again i put in the review 4.5 um and five i i very rarely give five star reviews five stars really for me is that it's either perfect or i love it so wholeheartedly that i am only subjective about it that i cannot be objective about the book <laughs> at all or i don't want to be objective about the book so five stars are really really rare for me um there's something that where it speaks to me directly that i love it and it does have to i i have to say i don't love this but it does have to have that subjective i loved it not just that it was a good book or an excellent book 
I have to love the book. So even if the book is the most perfect book in the world, if I didn't like it, it's only going to get a four. <laughs> and I don't love that. And I'm like that with um when I rate stuff on Letterboxd as well um, for film. I won't give something five stars if I didn't enjoy watching it. The most it's going to get is a four. So but that's it's the ratings are subjective. And then going uh, the slippery slope down the other direction, a two star, which is pretty rare for me. But a two star means that they're either I, I, th I thought it was like confusing or hard to follow, um, like in terms of the writing, uh, which is pretty rare. Um, or there were things that bothered me in it or things were problematic in it. And I do try and indicate that not always it depends on how well I know the subject matter or what I think is problematic or what bothered me um, but a two star means that were things in it that bothered me there were things that were red flags there were things or there were multiple little things or there was at least one significant thing and then a one star is a bit hard because I used to use one stars as DNFs um, so there are some one star books that are are books that I didn't finish now I just leave them, I think, as unrated. Or I might leave them as one star. I DNF so very rarely. Um, and then, but one star is there were multiple issues with this book that probably bothered me as well as I felt were problematic. So either I really, 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 really didn't like it or it had multiple issues. And I guess a two star could be that I didn't really like it. I forgot that. I jumped up. I just totally omitted that. But theoretically it could be that it's usually not that it's usually that there were things I took issue with so yeah okay question number three is convince me to read your favorite book in no more no more than five words not gonna do it um I actually and I think I'm an unpopular or like a uh, not unpopular opinion but uh, uh, in the minority where I actually do not want to convince anyone to read a book um, one way or the other. I want people from my reviews or from my videos to be able to determine whether or not they think it's a book that they would enjoy. But my favorite book, it, it, there's 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 no reason someone should, should read it if they don't think that they would enjoy it or get something from it, which is one of the reasons why I feel like maybe I'm not a book reviewer. Because <laughs> I tend to go from an experiential perspective. Um, this is what I learned from something, whether it was or wasn't what I expected. And I have no, no desire to convince someone either to read to read something that they wouldn't like, or to slash a book down so that no one's ever going to read it. I do not come, my, my reviews do not come from that place. So it's not something that I'm interested in doing. And I actually get a little, a little worried when someone says that they picked up a book because I talked about it. I'm like, I think I like it because I get worried that they won't like it. Um, but, but genuinely, I try and provide like, I hope whatever I say helps someone make an informed decision on whether or not they think it's something that they would like or be interested in or whatever, or find engaging or use it as, as like if they're looking for examples or something. Um, but I'm not I'm not here to convince people to read books. <laughs> Feels weird. <laughs> Number four, which book was the hardest to review and why? Um, I went back and I actually have about 97 reviews now. I released all my old reviews and um I, I, when I went further back than a year, I, I couldn't remember whether they were hard to review or not. So from this year, I think the hardest book to review was Guilty Pleasures by Laurel uh, K. Hamilton, um, because it's an urban fantasy. It's the first in a really long running series. I had a fair amount of context about it in terms of that people, a lot of people have said they liked it to a certain point and then no further. So, and it was a book that I, I, I didn't love, but I didn't have that much to say, but I was, re I was reviewing it because it's on my sci-fi fantasy and weird project. And I do like urban fantasy and I was toying with this idea of doing urban fantasy reviews, but it just felt like a little, like I didn't I didn't have too much to say about it and I would rather talk about books that I really enjoy um than ones that I felt were like fine you know fine like it was fine but like I'm not going to continue the series I you know there was some things that I found enjoyable I also had a fair amount of time between when I read it and when I reviewed it because I, re I read it before I was um a couple months before I came back to the channel. So it just wasn't the best situation, but I did the best that I could and uh, just was honest that it had been some time since I read it. And those, I think that's always the best 
thing to do is just to be honest with the perspective that you're coming from. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> that's what I try and do. Um, in terms of older reviews, I do have a bunch that were but it was for other reasons. It was for like, you know, books I didn't get a positive response on. That didn't mean it was hard to get to do as a review. So yeah, that's my answer. Number five, are there any books you won't review or give a star rating at a principal? Um, this one I did review. I did do a review for it here, but I didn't give it a star rating. And that was Lord of the Flies. And this is one where it's by William, is it William Golding? Um, so I reviewed it. If you want to see my review, I, it was what an experience reading that was. I didn't give it a star rating because I just genuinely, I didn't enjoy reading it. However, that doesn't mean it wasn't a well-written book. However, I don't know how I feel about it in terms of like so many people have such a strong response to it, both positive and negative, not necessarily positive. Lots of people have a negative response to it. And then lots of people found it very, everyone had a very strong reaction to it. Um, and a lot of people seem to feel like this is what society would do. And that I find extremely scary. Like some people just feel like, yeah, that's what would happen. And I'm like, no. So I feel so conflicted about it and that I couldn't, I couldn't give it a star rating. I didn't, it doesn't fall within my star rating parameters. None because it's not like it wasn't well written. Although I did find some of the, sometimes some of the dialogue hard to follow. So yeah, I just didn't rate it. I just didn't rate it. Okay, now on to viewing reviews. Number six, a book that you really wanted to read has terrible reviews. Do you still read it? Yeah. I like I like I I like to I don't even I don't even look up reviews. Oh well that's actually a future question, which I'll answer in a sec. But generally speaking, if I'm interested in the book, I'm gonna read it. <laughs> like I don't I'm not I'm I'm not gonna be shy to wait. There there are um I, I would say if there's someone I know who has very similar reading tastes to me or has sim their similar themes, we feel the same on and they let me know that, you know, this book has X theme or Y theme or something you don't like or something like that. That might sway me. But generally speaking, if I'm interested in a book, I'm going to read it. I'm not going to be swayed by negative reviews. I'm just not. Nope. Number seven, where do you view book reviews outside of BookTube and what is your preferred format? Short, long, video, print, etc. Um, I actually, I think I prefer Goodreads reviews because I can read faster than I can watch. Um, and I like medium length reviews um, and reviews that use spoiler tags so that you don't accidentally find out something, <laughs> you know, um, because that off, that can happen to me um, when I, I, when I, when, when, they're not used, then all of a sudden it's like, you know, the end or the outcome of something within the book. Um, and yeah, but I, I th so if I'm going to re read a review, Goodreads is it. I don't, sometimes I look at the ones on Amazon, although I think Amazon just pulls from Goodreads. Um, but sometimes Amazon, I do feel, oddly, I feel like it's a little less reliable um, than Goodreads. Um, there's lots of glowing, non-specific reviews. <laughs> So I go to Goodreads. Number eight, at what point do you read reviews um, of a book that you're reading before, during, and after? And do you seek out reviews that are similar to yourself or opposing? Um, I think after, I would look after if I'm confused about something, um, like, like how, or how wanting to see how other people felt about a resolve, um, if I felt conflicted or if I loved it or if I didn't love it. So that I would seek out. Um, I try not to seek out reviews while I'm in the middle of reading something, unless there is something that I'm questioning whether or not I want to continue, if it continues to go down a certain road. But I find anytime I look at a review in the middle of reading something, it's just you, just the, the smallest thing can be a spoiler because now you have all the context of the book. Um, and the only time I check reviews ahead of time is when I'm looking through free Kindle books on Amazon. Um, and um, there's so many free books on Amazon. So I will look at reviews on Goodreads to check them out to see um what people thought and how many reviews, not necessarily how many, but if like the reviews 
are, are a variety of different ones and those ones I might read some of the ones that are like one star and two star just in case there's like like lots of editing errors or you know those kinds of things so that is I think the most likely time is before I even buy a free Kindle book is the most likely time <laughs> number nine stand out from the crowd what book have you read that has the lowest rating on Goodreads oh that you loved I totally forgot that I needed some reference materials here so bear with me okay so which book have you read with the lowest rating on Goodreads <laughs> this one's funny this one is funny so where is this board it should be tags okay so that would be taken by the t-rex by christy sims this has a goodreads rating of 1.35 um it is a 17 page <laughs> dinosaur erotica story i give it four stars um that being said i wouldn't actually necessarily say that i loved this but it is literally the lowest rated book i have read on goodreads and i thought it was enjoyable for what it was it's a dinosaur erotica i don't know what people are expecting but the lowest rated book that i really 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 loved was actually a work by ibsen it was the burial mount or the warrior's barrow um i read it earlier this year's i gave it a 9 out of 10 it has a 3.05 on goodreads but it only has 22 ratings it's only 41 pages long it's a viking story and it's got very whimsical or it has a viking element to it or was it vikings yeah it's vikings and um uh it's sort of Oh, it's just I just really loved it and it was whimsical too so it was great and number 10 which book have you read with the highest rating on Goodreads that you hated now hate is a strong words and I there's very few books that I hated but the one the highest rated book that I gave two stars to I think that's what I ended up going with was actually the Kraken King and the Empress's Eyes which is point four point seven in the Iron Seas uh, which is part of the Kraken King series by Mel Jean Brooke, who also writes under Emilla Vane. This is a short story novella. Uh, I think it was like an eight-part in-betweener. Um, I hadn't read the original series. Um, and uh, it's steampunk. And I think, to be honest, I think I just don't really love steampunk. So that might have something to do with it. I have since then read The Iron King or The Iron Duke, the first in the Kraken King series world. And I, I wasn't a huge fan, so I haven't read, but I did like, there was a, there was a steampunk that I read. I just haven't read very much of it, but I just, I, I, I wasn't loving that. And they were really long holds for that novella series. And I was just like, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, what it is that people are, are loving from this, but I, cause 